how would you uh, describe the process today? Is it different from anything that you had gone through before? Yes, totally different from anything I've ever gone through before. And um, uh, I would say that if I look a little, uh, if I look a little worn out, it's because it was. I sweat the whole day. I was. I've been very excited about this. I haven't been as as nervous, I guess, or whatever it is, for anything in a long, long time. It was invigorating, challenging, and stimulating, all those good things. Uh, but much different, yes. I, I, uh, tip my hat. If I, if I had to interview someone, a matter of fact, I, I've been interviewing uh, guys for the fire chief in my hometown. And uh, they're coming in from all over the world, and I'm thinking I'm going to try this process. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It'll give me a good feel of who should be hired, I think. What, what surprised you about it? Was there any... It was in depth, and then it went into, you know, can I say what geeks on the subject? You know, it, A, it was, it came, it comes at you in, from different places, and it was, um, I don't know, orchestrated or, or designed to make sure that the questions were being asked by different people in from different perspectives you know so it wasn't a monotone of answers of you know how you how you put out fires and and get your men not to not to take too much time off um, and then it it went into the video a video process where you got to uh, actually watch a couple games which were really excruciating to watch and you can't imagine that they put themselves through that again to watch some of these games, but you know there were there were games and you you had to think, you know, and it wasn't a, you couldn't can an answer, uh, not only watching the videos but answering any of these questions. They were real questions. You know, it's not like what do you do with men on first and second, or you know how do you motivate your team to win, or you know so. <laughs> Thought-provoking questions. Bobby, with questions in mind, if you get this job, inevitably you're going to make some in-game decisions that backfire. Yes. The media will then ask you to explain yourself, especially if you went against convention or statistical probability. Are you normally going to answer those questions, or are you going to be like some of the managers who just roughly say, that's what I wanted to do? Would I be allowed to say that's just what I wanted to do? <laughs> Isn't there always a follow-up question after that? Like, why is that just what you want to do? Uh, at the risk of uh, not getting hired, I'd probably say I'll probably answer the questions too long rather than too short. If you need an answer, I'll really try to. I, I think the, the manager in his pregame and postgame press conferences, etc., is one of the ways that the fans get to know about your team. And in today's world, it's not about giving those customers less. I think it's about giving them more. And so uh, I'll try to stay within parameters, of course, and not get my ass fired real quickly. But I, I, I don't think that those answers of, you know, I just felt like doing it or is good enough. I, I've been in the media, you know. And I don't like those answers either. But they happen. Yeah, yeah. Bobby, when you came, when you came back to Japan, why did you? Was it in your mind that you wanted to manage again in the big leagues? Or? Well, I had a I had a run there that I built this this thing there, and I was 59, ready to turn 60, and knew that if I signed up for another tour of duty, there would never be a door that could open up here again. So. I was rolling the crap, uh, the dice a little, you know, uh, in that I didn't know that I'd come back and have an opportunity, but I knew if I waited another four years and, and stayed there for another four years, it would be, you know, over a decade that I was out of the country and there'd be no doors that would open. So, what did that? How did that experience do you think affect you in terms of how you would be when you become a manager again? You know, because most of the time I was speaking through an interpreter uh, in the first few years at least, um, everything I said uh, had to be inspected, 
you know, I, I couldn't just say things. A lot of times you think, didn't you hear me? I said it. Well, there you're saying it, and then there's an interpreter interpreting it, so you had to see if, in fact, the listener understood what you were saying. So that whole idea of inspecting what you expect was, was an everyday life. Um, I think the same thing holds true when you're speaking to someone who speaks your language, because sometimes they're just not listening. Or sometimes what you're saying is not understood properly, so you have to inspect what you expect. And, and um, I found that, this, that they are a very disciplined society, yet they really liked and understood that reward and reprimand type of thing. They, you know, everyone says, oh yeah, they always show up on time, you know, oh yeah, they always hustle, oh yeah, they, they don't miss signs. Yeah, you know what, they don't, but you know, they, they need recognition of the fact that they're doing a good job, you know, and they also need reprimand when they don't meet expectations. Bobby, how important is discipline and can the disciplinarian succeed with today's modern prayer? Yeah. Um, di you know, discipline <coughs> is, is not, you know, 30 wax with a, with a whip, you know, in these days. But I think everyone likes discipline. I think everyone likes structure. And everyone, again, likes to be acknowledged when they do things properly. When they don't do things properly, believe it or not, most people, and athletes in particular, like to be noticed that they're not doing what is right. And so um, when you talk about discipline and rules and all that, it's just about right and wrong. It's just about an expectation of a person who's representing a great organization like the Boston Red Sox a passionate, committed team like they have in the front office and in ownership, expecting them to know the difference between right and wrong. You know, on the field and off the field, and when they're talking to you and when they're living their life. You know, and that's the discipline kind of thing that I think um, I try to bring to a team. Bobby. Two more questions, Bobby. Uh, you had mentioned that you met with Ben and with Larry prior to the hardcore event. Uh, did you think then that the process was closed to you at that point? You know, as interviews were progressing to the second round, talking to Ben. You know, Larry made it pretty clear that this was going to be Ben's choice, and that when I walked out of the room with Ben, uh, I was hoping that I was received well enough that I'd be able to come and get a second tour of duty. Um, but I wasn't sure. And I didn't get a phone call for a few days. And, uh, you know, that that made a situation that I was really happy that I only told my wife that I had talked to Ben, you know? And I didn't have to explain to people why I wasn't getting a phone call. And, uh, and then I, I also want to say that during the time, Larry said, you know, a lot of guys are coming through the long interview process. And um, that at that time, because I'm working for ESPN, and because it's a very difficult thing to go two weeks or three weeks, however long the process is, working for a major media station and network and not getting yourself in a, in a jam. Hold up the jam for a while. Bobby, Bobby how yeah. open are you to receiving input uh, day to day from baseball ops as, in terms of you know on field decisions? And yeah, and that? I would expect it. I would hope for it. I never lived. I haven't lived with it, and I live hearing about it and thinking about it. And as I told Ben, as I told Mike, as I told Brian, as I told Al, that this is a growth opportunity for me. I'm I'm one of these guys that. that I know I'm old, my, my, the back of my card is my birth, date of birth, but I, I want this to be a growth. I want to understand what's going on in my life. My life is baseball. I've been outside of the information age of baseball for the most part. Craig Wright was very good, but he was, 
simply wasn't in vogue at the time, you know? So he would write synopsises for me. And when I got to read them all, and I understood the difference between, you know, bunning and, and stealing and all the things that uh, was going on then. Last question. Because you started here, please. Oh, given ESP, that's it. Prefer it. Given that uh, Dale was brought in for a second interview last week with the owners, what, what part of you think feels like your plan B? You know, if I was plan B and I got this job, I would feel like I, it was Christmas and it was I was plan A, uh, the luckiest guy in the world. So I, I don't know about that and. Uh, you know, cool. It's it's really uh, kind of cool that I'm sitting here, actually. So.